and welcome to our YouTube channel. Thank you so dearly for always supporting us. I really do appreciate. If this is the first time you are coming across this wonderful family, or you are seeing my face for the first time, I still remain Agatha Progress, bringing it to you back to back. Remember, we react to our videos and our opinion is highly needed. So just sit back and watch this video, and I will be right back. Friend of IPOB, and anytime Mazinam they cannot want to do something, they bring him backward. Crime is the only thing that will make you to excel in Nigeria. That is why we are living in Nigeria. Somebody like me is the reason why I'm living in Nigeria. Among other things, Hope Uzodima was an arm robber, complete arm robber. And he was facing death row in Imo State. This Imo State of today. Now, I want to tell you a story. He took the intervention of one king and one native doctor to save Hopo Zodema from being executed as an arm robber. Yes, arm robber like Anini. The last arm robbery that Hopo Zodema went he was captured with his gangs in the 70s. In the 70s. He was arrested. He was captured. And at the end of the day, he faced execution. Death row. That is why I am calling on everybody that is from 50 years upward. I want you all to go and check your memory. Who is that guy? Who was that hope that was arrested for armed robbery with his gangs in 1970 and he was sentenced or facing death row in Imo State? And one king and one native doctor intervened. Now, what you see today is that especially... I want those from the communities where the killings are very visible, where Hopu Zodema is committing the highest killing in Imo State today. I want this broadcast to go to anybody that is age 50 years. In all the community that is witnessing the highest number of killing in Imo State. This is a work. This is a, is a task that you must do. Now, what you see happening apart from the the interest of Fulanese, apart from the interest of Fulanese, Hopu Zodima have come to wage war against some communities in Imo State, some communities that knew him. And let me tell you, it is the time. Those people who do not know why Hopu Zodima is killing people in their community. I want you to show this video to people that are 50, from 50 years upward, ask them question. And let me tell you, the killing in Biafra land will not stop until Hopu Zodema is, is down, either dead or alive. Because all the killings you see today is being sponsored by him. This is the business he has done. This is his life. So we don't think that uh, Okorocha, Okorocha is a bad man. We know that. Okorocha is a bad politician. Uh, the Uchemozo and all of them, they are bad. I'm not, I'm not defending anybody. But let me tell you, Hopu Zodema have not finished what he come to do. What you see happening now is a revenge of what some community did to him in Imo State. So it is very, very imperative because you need to know where your problem is coming from. In addition to Fulani, Hopu Zodima have a special hatred to some communities that are being butchered today because of what they did to him when he was an arm robber. It was after Hopu Zodema was released through the, through, through the intervention of one, one powerful king then. And of course, you can't talk about that without mentioning the chief doctor. 
It was after that that they told him he ran away to Lagos. So the history that you know today, the history that you are parading about Hopus Odima today was the middle of the history of him. When after he has faced death row to be killed like an enemy of a do state. Then after that, he went and ran away to Lagos. It was in Lagos that this Hopus Odima you see joined the gang of 419 and he became driver. And then, of course, from there, you already know the history. I do not need to tell you more about what happened from Lagos till, you know, during the days of the 419 and all that. So, why am I saying this? Why I'm saying this is that the man sitting in the affair of the Imo state government, the man, the number one citizen of Imo state government, is a hardened criminal. And so everything you see playing out today is something that he's very, very experienced. He's an experienced arm robber. He's an experienced 419er. Driver to Okwele, Okwele Hodi. Thank you. He's an experienced criminal. He's an experienced arm robber. He's an experienced higher assassin. So it's not, it did not start today. Now, what worries me is that how come, how come somebody that is a very hardened criminal, an armed robber with gun, going to rob people, steal and kill? And let me tell you the reason why Hopus Adema was uh, arrested in the, in the last armed robbery. He was arrested after the, after the last armed robbery in the 70s because during that armed robbery people were killed and you know in nigeria those armed robbers they will rob and go any day they kill people that is when police will walk that's when police will walk in those days in those days anytime armed robber kills somebody we will always hear that they have arrested them so but when armed robber go and uh, and rob and then uh, you know nobody is killed police will all because they know the police know who rob where and where they rob so only time police will go after those because they know who they are is any time somebody is killed police will always want to prove it itself they want to prove that they are in charge so they will always go after the people because they know who they are so after that arm robbery hope was, people were killed by hope was them during the arm robbery and then he was arrested with his gang. Why would somebody of such character become a politician and a governor? Not even just a governor, a senator. Today, why? Because Nigeria breed criminals. Without criminality, you can never succeed and excel in Nigeria. Let me tell you, when they talk, come and tell you that, oh, look at people, are, some people are doing fine. They are all crime, crime. And that is the reason why we are living for good. We are exiting. We are exiting Nigeria. The same thing you see where Abakaere, Abakaere was indicted in, in America. Do you hear of him today? No, Nigeria shelled him. While they spent money to go and bring Mazin Amdikano, who have committed no crime, other than agitating for the freedom of his people because of Nigeria criminality. They spent money and they go to Kenya. Somebody said, Hope Uzodema was born on 12 December 1958. How can he become criminal in 1970? I said 70s. Now, that is why I ask you to go and ask your people in your villages from 55, from 50 years upward. And now, minus this 12 December 1958, from 17th, from 79, 78, 
and you know how many years he was. And then also, remember with the lies of their age. Were you there in 1958 when he was born? Are you the one that gave birth to Hopus Odema in 1958? During this 1958, what was the record? How do you how do you keep record of birth in Nigeria? What was the system? What was the system of keeping the birth record in Nigeria? That is the question you should ask. Was he really born in 58? And then if you minus 12 December 1958, and then from 1979, 1978, and 81, and 81, up to 81, minus it, and you tell me how, how old he was then. You see, this is the problem with some of you. So I want you, first of all, Okay, somebody say it was 1986. It was 1986 that it happened. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that is why I said you must. Uh, sorry, where is the where is the comment? All right, somebody said David Obwe Obwe. If he said Simon, it was 1986 that happened. You see, so David, can you tell us what happened? <laughs> can you tell us more? About what happened? <laughs> huh? Can you tell us more? You see, it does not matter which uh, how many years. It, it does not matter which year. It, but can you tell us that Hopus Odema was facing death row as an armed robber? That is what matters here. Because even his age, the date of birth cannot be trusted. So... It does not matter which year, which year, whether it is 70s, whether it is 80. Tell us, was he facing death row as an armed robber and because during that armed robbery, he killed people? So what did he respond? We need to know. You see, don't, don't, don't pay attention to the to the year, whether, you know, because this is something that we need. That's why I ask you to make sure that people from 50 years and 55 upward in your communities where these killings are happening, they watch this particular broadcast because we need some in-depth, a more in-depth, uh, uh, you know, uh, finding, you know, and analysis on this. So because we need to know, you see, you need to know why the killings are happening in a specific and a particular place in Imo State. That is where we are going to. You know, this is the introductory. Now we are going to, you know, the places where these killings are happening and we are going to find out the reason why the killings are in those happening in those places. It has nothing to, let me tell you, it has nothing to do with the ESN. Yes, ESN is part of it. That is the Fulani, uh, you know, uh, agenda and all that. But then there are some specific things that I'm going to exp expose in days to come. So, but we need to begin to establish this fact, you know. So if you know, you know, this, that it was 1986, can you tell us, can you tell us, was he facing death, was he on death row in 1986 for armed robbery, where he used gun to go and steal, because he is an armed robber, or he was an armed robber then, which he's still now, and then, but now he's stealing with pain. So, and he went to rob, and he killed people, and arrested him, and he was facing death row. And a king in Imo State, a very powerful king then, in Imo State, was the one who saved him. And then also, in addition to that king, was another native doctor. So please, I want you to confirm this first, because once we confirm this particular uh, thing that you know, because it, it cannot be only me that we know it. So once you confirm it, then we are now going to go forward to tell you why the killings are happening and why it is happening in those specific places. All right? So I'll be waiting and reading comment as we continue this particular introductory to... to... Uh, to Hopus Odema. And why I am doing this is that most of the politicians in Nigeria have this record of criminality. They have, most of them are 419ers, most of, most of them are ritualists, most of them are uh, arm robbers, most of them are into a different kind of crime before joining politics. And that is why when they join the politics, they bring the crimes they have committed their past life into that particular politics where they are playing. And that is why you see all this chaos everywhere. Because it is what they are you know, good in doing. And don't tell me you did not know how Hopus Odema 
manipulated the result of this election from the hotel room in Abuja. It is it, it takes somebody with with crimi, with a criminal mind to go to that extent that from the position from fourth position they change him to the first position and he can sleep and wake up every day. It, it you know it takes somebody with a very criminal mind to to be able to sleep and wake up. Now I will be reading because I just need to confirm the year 70, uh, 70 or 70s uh, is different. Whether it is 70, whether it is 70s, can you confirm that he was a criminal and he was an armed robber and he was arrested and he was facing death row? Forget whether it is 70s, forget whether it is 90, forget whether he was born in 1914. Tell me, was he an armed robber and he was arrested and facing death row? That's all I want to ask before even going to Lagos to join 419. All right. So those of you who are, uh, those of you who are, who are, uh, you know, calculating or very calculative, where if you have replied, what did the if you say? What did the if you say? I am, I am yet to see Obuefi. Obuefi, you may wish to. You may wish to join, uh, you know, when I open the line, you don't need to bring your face uh, since you want to address this. You don't need to show your face, you know, but we need to we need to hear more about what you know about this uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, history of Hopus Odema because people don't know it. And then after we have established this, because, you know, I don't talk with that fact. After the fact here, the fact here is that he was an armed robber. Another fact here is that he was arrested. Another fact here is that the arrest was because he killed people during the armed robbery. Another fact here is that he was facing death row. He was on death row to be killed, for, to be executed, like Amini of Benin was executed. Another fact here is that the one of the king in Imu State intervened and saved him. Another fact here is that in addition to that king, one native doctor was also part of those who intervened to save him. Another fact here is that it was after they saved him from that execution, he ran to Lagos and joined 419 plus other criminal activities. These are all facts. So it does not matter whether the 1970 or 1975 or in 1970s or in 1980s, that one is secondary. What is the main fact is that was he the one who was uh, facing the death row? That is, what, that is all that matters. It does not matter which year. Let me tell you, in criminal law, when a, when a prosecutor is indicting a suspect and a suspect that committed a crime maybe the prosecutor did not know did not know the exact time this crime took place do you know what they do let me teach you people law today what the prosecutor experienced prosecutor not anyhow not what this nigeria court and join the experienced pro prosecutor will tell you if for example they are investigating not even prosecutor but police it start from police for example you know of course police will if police were unable to establish the exact time of that crime. What they do is that between so 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 time to so 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 time, this crime took place. So let us assume that this crime now took place between 1970 to 1986, since only person that is committed here is saying 1986. So we are now saying that the uh, the uh, the armed robbery of uh, Hope Uzodema that uh, made uh, led to his arrest and then also facing death row in Nigeria was between 1970s to 1980s. Let us put it like that, or 80s. That is how experienced prosecutors does it. When you don't know the exact time of the crime, because I was not there. <laughs> okay? Now, so the point here for those who are looking for where to say Samanepa have uh, quoted something wrong, I have defeated you again with another superior uh, legal uh, argument. It is called the technicalities. <laughs> The aeroplane tuners. All right. So let us read. But I'm still yet to read. I've read Emmanuel Obaino. Uh, he can start robbing from 70s. And then the thing happened in 86. That also. But, you know, we are not we are not contemplating or insinuating anything. We want that particular fact, which means he was arrested and he was facing the death row. And that's where uh, and that's where the, uh, the our 50 plus uh, and above a Nemo state should now step in. because. And why I am doing this is that we have finally found out where and how to stop the killing in the Southeast. Because once Hopus Odema is down, that is the end of the killing. What you see him doing now is what we call Agadiwa Yanara Akanka Neguomarawa. 
So let us, uh, if it's 1986, that makes it worse. <laughs> if it is 1986, uh, that will make it worse. You really old enough to know better. Well, we don't know. Uh, anybody who is uh, telling us something must be very uh, reasonable and objective. You, you want to write something, you write so that everybody will comprehend what you are trying to say. Uh, so somebody said, uh, round, even your upcoming president, Tinubu said, he is 69 years. <laughs> Thank you very much. He's more than 18. All right, let us move forward. I need to know what uh, uh, our brother say. Yeah, they are just distractors. We know, we know, we know. But of course, we are going to, I know how we are going to establish the fact. It is not, it, everything is not going to happen today. Like I said, this is just an introduction. Introductory live brokers to hope Ozodema and the need to bring him down or out of anything politics in, in, a, in the Southeast Biafra land for peace, tranquility to return to the entire region. Because people do not know what that man is and what he has done in the past. That is why he's the only governor who is coming openly to tell you, I asked them to leave that place, I'm going to bomb there. I asked them to leave that place, I'm going to bomb there. It is a hardened criminal. Even the president of Nigeria, when Nigeria had a president, a president of Nigeria cannot come on, on, a, on a screen. Because, you know, those, those who were being president, you know, some of them, are, at least, they are not this kind of criminal that I'm talking about now. So you cannot see a president, you have never seen a president in Nigeria saying, even Obasanjo, when Obasanjo bombed Udi, is it Udi? Uh, you know, when Oba, is it Udi? Somewhere there, you know, where Obasanjo bombed that time. Even when Obasanjo bombed that uh, place, he did not come to say, I'm going to bomb there, live there. No. But if you have, tell me, because, you know, some of us don't have, uh, don't have that information. But if you know that Obasanjo came to say, I will bomb that place, I will bomb Udi, I will do this, I will do that. Tell me. The only thing you hear was that military went there and bombed. The military killed. And then you accuse Obasanjo because Obasanjo was the president. And of course, there were insinuations that he ordered the bombardment of, uh, is it Udi? Where is the, what is the name of the place Obasanjo, Obasanjo uh, bombed during his time? What is the name of the place? Right. All right. Somebody have responded. Uh, David Obuefi responded. Uh, David Obuefi responded that he was condemned as a criminal. Sorry, he was condemned as a criminal. Where is this? Where is this comment for Christ's sake? Okay, I am going to I'm going to pull David. I'm going to pull David uh, because I can see it here. I am going to pull David. I'm going to pull David uh, comment. Well, David, if you can still, you know, comment because somebody have just forwarded a screenshot of David comment, a, a response from David, and I believe this is somehow, uh, this somehow sound legit. David Obuefi somehow the uh, comment sound in OD. Is it OD? Okay, Obasanjo bombing OD. Yeah. Odin Bayosa. So, did you hear Obasanjo coming to tell you we are going to bomb Udi? We are going to do this. Obasanjo, I don't know whether Obasanjo can make that such utterances, but tell me, is there any president in Nigeria that will come and start boasting how he is going to bomb this, how he's going to bomb that? Not even a politician. I have never, you know, uh, Odi, sorry, Odi, yeah. So, I thought I was thinking Odi or something. So, it is Odi. Do you, the, in Bayosa, yeah. So, did you hear Obasanjo that time? No, but the point is that. Because people know that Obasanjo must have knowledge about it and Obasanjo must have ordered it. So the people were saying Obasanjo ordered the killing in Udi. But he did not come to say, I have told them I'm going to bomb them tomorrow. I will bomb them tomorrow. Because once you say that, you are committing war crime. You are committing war crime, genocide. You are, and that is exactly what Hopus Odema have committed. 
you have committed war crime. And that's why we are asking you in Imo State to bring evidences of this killing. We want to see the name of the people. We want to see the, the picture of the dead people. We want to see those things because we need them. We need them. The most thing, the important thing you are going to do is to bring the picture of victims of Hopus uh, uh, you know, uh, killing. We need their names. We need their names, at least their names. We need to know the community they come from, the community they were killed, something like that. So if we don't have these particular details of the victims of Hopus or Dema killing, we are going nowhere. We are going nowhere. Because that is one of the most important details we are going to use at the ICC. The reason why some of you don't see anything happening in ICC yet is because some of this killing, it does not mean that it doesn't exist. But we need details. We need details. We need the name of the victims. We need to know who they are. We need to know where they come from. We need to know the community where they were killed and all that. All these things are needed. Once we don't have it, it becomes so difficult. All right. So There is no room for the evil and there is no hidden place for them. Hope Uzodima and as many politicians that have in one way or the other caused people to cry in the southeastern part of Nigeria, they are forgetting that that particular seat, they will not sit there forever. And when that time is duly ripe, <laughs> they will quit. So I see no reason why the evil they are doing right now is going to live within them, not after them anymore. Credit to Simon Ekpa, keep exposing these people. That is all we need right now. You are doing a marvelous job once again. Thank you so dearly.